It's a difficult time for school districts across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania as legislators get down to the tough bargaining over a state budget with calls by some for cuts in certain programs. There is great concern. School superintendents from a variety of communities, east and west, rural, urban and suburban, say that if they do not receive sufficient funding, they will have to cut programs, hours, staff, and could raise local property taxes to make up for the deficit from the state funding cuts. So joining us now is Dr. Patrick Dowd. He is executive director of Allies for Children, a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization that speaks out on behalf of the needs of the children of Pennsylvania. Patrick, welcome back to the show. Always good to have you. Thanks here. for having me, Jen. So, how bad a situation is it in Harrisburg? So it's a pretty rough situation. I mean, it's not like last year where we had a long delay, but we have a budget that's really thin on increases for public education. And at the same time, and we're hearing this from superintendents all across our region and all across the Commonwealth. At the same time, there. Are really serious rising costs. Uh, and so the, the, the shortfall from the state, even if it'll be an increase, it's not going to be enough to cover those costs. It's going to have to be made up at the local level, and that's really what their concern is. Well, that, of course, means higher taxes or program cuts. Higher, higher taxes, cuts in programs, or dipping into those reserves. Districts have been trying to build up those reserves, knowing that these days are coming, like last year or what, what might come this year. I thought I heard Governor Wolf mm -hmm. and the Republican House leaders proclaim a 100 yeah. million dollar increase in the uh, basic education funding is, is that's that exactly right so it's a 100 100 million increase for basic education funding you're it, saying that's not enough that's clearly not enough we need to get to some form of adequate funding from the state their their portion of funding is way lower than the national average and way lower than it needs to be here in the commonwealth and what's more important it's out of whack with the state mandated costs things that are related to pensions things that are related to, to charter schools and other costs that are required by the state right. uh, that districts can't actually fund so they're also cutting transportation costs by 50 million. It's a major, first time major cut that, that's being proposed that both House uh, Republicans and the so, governor. So, school districts that uh, have school buses? The, it would be exactly that. The cut to the transportation it could be school buses, it could be Port Authority passes in different communities, things of that sort. But that, right. that you'll see a cut in that. Uh, and there are, again, these rising costs that go with it. So, it's a, it's a challenging time for superintendents. This is exactly the moment that they're putting together their preliminary budgets. They send them on to the state. School districts will have to pass their budget on the same day as the state. So, there's a little bit right. of a chicken and the egg and, and districts are saying look if you don't provide those additional resources and help us cover those costs at the local level right. we're gonna have to take these different actions I think we get a tax bill pretty soon a property that's, tax bill from most of our um, school districts ultimately right? that's that's one of the core problems here is that the state has an obligation to provide that equity and that that platform of funding if if we have to rely on local property taxes that just further exacerbates the inequality that we see across the 500 school districts let me ask you about the federal government because it's bad enough at the state level but but the federal government situation uh, with uh, proposed cuts in education and then this wacky, I, I, this is confusing to me, so help yep. us out to understand. The educational community in Pennsylvania and across the country are very concerned about cuts in Medicaid. Medicaid, exactly. Now Medicaid is what most of us think is medical care for the poor and for the working poor, uh, lower income folks, it's, as it's expanded under the Affordable Care Act. <clears throat> How in the world does cuts, do cuts in Medicaid affect our school system? So the first and most important fact about Medicaid, particularly in Pennsylvania, is that 43% of all Medicaid recipients in Pennsylvania, so the plurality, 43% are children. And a lot of those dollars, not all of them, but significant numbers of dollars flow to school districts to serve children, meet their needs each and every day in the classroom. Additionally, those dollars flow to aids and support for students outside of the classroom. Are so we talking about children with special needs? It'll be children with special needs, but additionally, children who are in, in those lower income categories uh, won't have access to that health insurance. So this, this Medicaid is really a program for children, and it serves through, in part, through school districts, through you know, private providers and others. Um, and so the cuts to Medicaid, which, you know, $880 billion is what we're talking about just initially. In, uh, the, in the Trump budget. In the Trump budget, that's 880 b with a billion. It, it would re, uh, represent about uh, $1.5 billion over eight years here in Pennsylvania. That's just going to further erode any, any sort of progress that's being made currently 
around providing equitable education and fair education and adequate education so, funding. So if children did not get this aid, if their families did not get this aid, which, which goes to the school districts, right. would the school districts still be required to... Exactly. They're gonna, they're, that, that's one of the things we're trying to figure out. We believe that it's still going to be the case, that they're going to be required to pick up those services. And quite frankly, in order for students to be successful, they're going to be required. Even if it's not a federal mandate, it's still it's a requirement for those kids in order to be successful. So, so, it's the, not federal, really, so the bottom line is if the federal government cuts a billion plus out of monies for Pennsylvania, then again, our local homeowners through their property taxes are going to have to make up the difference. It's, the state's really going to have to take the lead. That's going to be our argument is that that can't be a burden that's going to be borne by the local community. That's going to have to be taken on by the state. Ultimately, though, the, the more important part is we should not, we should not just take a, a butcher approach to the, the Medicaid right. project. Sure, we can reform it, but there's no way that we can cut 800 We have billion. about 15 seconds left. I mean, your pitch basically is that we've got to be in touch with both our state legislators and our congressmen and senators. Yep about educational funding and Medicaid funding. So if, as far as the education funding, it's your state senator, your state representative. You can find uh, their information on our website or, or elsewhere. Um, and as far as the Medicaid, and the, it's really the American Health Care Act. As far as that act, it's really reaching out to Senator Patrick Toomey and to Senator Bob Casey and sharing your views and thoughts about making sure that we're not cutting Medicaid, which is, again, health insurance for children, particularly here in Pennsylvania. Well, Dr. Patrick Dowd, it's always great Thanks. to have you on the show. Your Thanks, expertise John. is clear, and we Thanks. were very happy to have you share it with us. So Thanks, John. Thank you again. Good luck to you. Thank you. We'll be back with more of the Sunday Business Page in just a few minutes.